What's up, Stalemates? Welcome back to another episode. Very fun interview today. We have Iowa State royalty in the house, Kyvin Gadsden. You might know him, national champion. Currently training for the 2021 Olympic Games. I'm excited to have him on. We had a very good conversation. A lot of fun was to be had. I like when guests come on, willing to have fun. He was game. Hope you guys enjoy it. But first, please drop a comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Uh, we're reaching, uh, we're getting there to 400 subscribers soon. Thanks for watching. All right. Good morning, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. My name's Zach. This is Stalemates. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Problem. And wait. So give me give me some um, background on Stalemates. How did it get started? What like what was your what was your process to getting Stalemates started and everything? All right, you're flipping it on me now. Now I got the questions. <laughs> yeah, for 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 the beginning. For the All beginning. Right. Yeah, so I, um, I'm just a big wrestling fan, specifically Iowa State wrestling fan. And okay. uh, during quarantine, I had to, uh, I couldn't work for two months. And so um, I wanted to do something different with wrestling and kind of keep it humorous. Uh, I feel like a lot of the wrestling media is kind of more about, I don't know, kind of like more about the X's and O's. And so I'm trying to keep it more fun, more fan friendly and a little bit different, you know. Okay. Because it's hilarious. You watch it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Yeah, but you're a bit. Like, busy. I see, like I see the Iowa State wrestling flag in the background, so like yeah. that, that might that might put me over the top to become a, a avid uh, listener and subscriber and watcher. Okay, actually, uh, since you brought it up this morning, I was on Facebook Marketplace and um, I found a Cyclone robe. Someone's selling like an old vin. I probably shouldn't tell you. You might go buy it, but somebody listed an old Cyclone robe. You tried to bring that back when uh, was it your junior year? You tried to bring it back. Sophomore year. Sophomore, Sophomore year. year. Yeah. yeah. Do you still have that? Are you get it? I'm yeah, going to. Be- yeah, I'm going to try to yeah. get it and frame it and put it on the wall down here. That'd be dope. Yeah, I'm excited. You Who knows? Facebook, you don't have to worry about me. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I should go buy it and then air this episode later on. Yeah, I was about to say you need to go handle that like like ASAP, like because yeah. if, if someone hears that, um, they're definitely gonna go get it. How much is it listed for? Uh, thirty dollars, cheap. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't tell no, you that you either. Gotta, wait, what are you waiting for then? I had to. I have to interview you first. I wanted to get this done. This is important. No, dude. Like, dude, handle it right now. Like, I want to <laughs> see you handle it. Well, let, let me get to my first question here. I'm gonna okay. say I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna try to throw you for a loop today, and I want to know. I want to see your instant reaction, and I kind of want to know what this means. Um, okay. The early Facebook days, I believe it, it was your middle name. You had it, uh, Yaga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Young athletes getting accolades. Um, so <laughs> Nate Carr Jr. Um. Nate Carr Jr. and I, myself, when we got to, <laughs> when I got to college, because he, he was here already, and he had went to Iowa Central, and obviously that relationship between Nate Carr Sr. and my dad was, like, super tight. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad was in Nate Sr.'s corner for all three of his NCAA titles. Um, Nate Sr. gave the eulogy at my dad's funeral. My dad was... Nate Sr.'s best man at his wedding. Mm-hmm. So that relationship goes back. That's Uncle Nate for me. Um, and when Nate Jr. came up to Iowa Central, he used to come to the house and beat me up, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would he would come over for the holidays and stuff, you know, home away from home. And when I went on my recruiting visit to Iowa State, he was my, my host. Um, and um, he's just always been like a, a older cousin, big brother type type person for me and um that was just like our our saying was like yaga you know like it was just like it was like our 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 heart our hype energy our hype energy um my wrestling uh, room we started adopting that because uh i was following you from afar and uh me and my friends we in practice we would just start yawning we didn't even know what it meant it could have meant something bad and we would have never (laughs) even known so tragic (laughs) so yeah we had like we had had, like yaga shirts um (laughs) young athletes getting getting athlete accolades um but i guess i guess we didn't do a good enough job uh, of like marketing and uh establishing the brand um 
because yeah, that was that was like our thing. Like, <laughs> but that was that was a, that was a good time. That was a good time. Yeah. So uh, I see the wrestling mat in the background, but um, I, I know you're training somewhere else as well. The barn. Can you explain the barn at all? Um. Yeah. The barn is just. Um. You have uh, Gilbert, Iowa, right down the road, and um, they've always been Iowa State. You know supporters and supporters of wrestling in basically the central Iowa area and um, um, the Smith family uh, has allowed, you know, us to come in there and, and wrestle and, and, and get better and continue to work on our craft, you know, without, um, uh, you know, I think without, you know, hindering this, um, the, the, this pandemic so it's been awesome being able to go in there and get wrestling in i'm actually going to do a camp um today down the road in roland because when um the whole pandemic hit and quarantine hit and everything like that um i was getting in some light workouts and stuff in roland iowa at the bloom room um shout out to jeff uh for allowing me to do that so it's really low key um just myself and uh, a guy or two would go in there and get some get some rolls in. So it's been um beneficial. Like yeah, like you said, I got a mat in the background. I just got that in uh, fall of last year from the Ortners in uh, Gilbertville, Iowa. Um, they sold it to me for a really good price, and I'm super appreciative of them. Um, yeah, this is like this is my basement layer. So um, yeah. Is that the cycle in RTC house? Yeah, yeah, it is. It who is, all, who all lives in the house right now? Um, so it's me and my my family. Oh, gotcha. This in this specific one. Yeah. Um, so me and my family, and then uh, uh, there's three more. So it's like a town town home. Oh, okay. So like like one, one, two, three, four. So I know David Carr lives in it. Um, and, and um, some other guys live in it too. Yeah. That's just, that's not how I pictured it. I, I pictured it being like the ultimate fighter with a bunch of wrestlers in one house, but I forgot yeah, you had so the whole I, family that's, thing. That's, I mean, in a way, that's essentially what it is, except for we have our own, you know, own spaces, right? Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's fun. It's good times, except for there's always people walking through your yard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel responsible for bringing the cyclone marching band to the dual meets. I believe you put out, I could be wrong. I tried to find this last night and maybe it got deleted or maybe I just couldn't find it or maybe I'm just wrong altogether. But didn't you tweet something like, I want to see the cyclone band at the dual meets. And then next thing you know, they're there. Was that your, um, did you I, do that? I, I know I wanted that. And when I was in college, I know okay. I wanted, I wanted the, I wanted cheerleaders and the marching band in college. Um, and it never happened. Um, but no, I don't. I guess I don't feel responsible. But uh, I definitely was something that I thought would be cool because I always loved it at the football games, um, the basketball events, and I, I went. I tried to go to basically every single sport at Iowa State. Yeah. I tried to support everyone. Um, and my reasoning behind that was I loved Iowa State University. I love Iowa State athletics, um, and I felt like if I wanted people to, to come support me as a wrestler um, that I needed to support them in their, in their crafts and, and what they're doing, because everybody here was trying to be um, do a, you know, do, do great and be great in their own specific things. Um, I don't think I ever made it to tennis though. Um, although Sorry. I had tons of conversations with the tennis coaches um, and uh, talked with them a lot. I never, I, I never made it to a meet, I believe. Mm. Um, the other day you put out a tweet with the, the new braids, you know, Ooh, haircut. Nope. New braids. I remember <laughs> it was your, I think it, I can't, I'm not very good with dates, but I believe it was your sophomore year. Sophomore year you yeah. came out to, uh, like, I didn't know if you were going to wrestle or not, Right. And you came out, I think it was the old Dominion duel. You came out with braids. Yeah. Are, we, are, are the braids back officially? Um, Yeah, they're back. They're back Um, with a little man bun right I now. I see you. Yeah. Um, a little samurai, uh, you know, getting ready for Tokyo, right? So, yeah, um, yeah that, 
I, I, I brought him back um, just when my youngest daughter, Haven, was born. Um, mm -hmm. I cut hair the day before, so I've just been growing out my hair with her. Um, that's kind of the reasoning behind it. And um, basically, uh, in the Bible, you know, Stampson had long hair, and that's where he got his strength from. So that's something else that pulled at me. Um, but in college, I got it braided, and it only took this lady um, – like 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but it hurt so bad. Like my head was throbbing the whole time. Like, and then in the match, um, that was my first match back from being yeah. um, injured consistently, right? So that was my first match back. Um, I basically felt like I didn't know how to wrestle. Uh, still felt a little bit undersized for 197 pounds, all those things. And that was the first first match back. And then the hair cap would fall off. And I tried to take it off. And the ref told me um, I had to keep on the hair cap. Um, but it's interesting I, because, like, now, like, um, you can wear braids. Yeah, I don't know um, why. If it's, if it's braided back, why do they – why did the, why the cap? Because um, UFC, they don't have to wear any sort of cap, and they can put theirs back in braids. I never understood that. I don't know. And, and, it's, and it's an interesting thing in – it might be because of race, you know, um, black hair is tends to be rougher um, mm -hmm. and um, cause more like abrasions. You know, like if I were to rub my hair like in your face right now, it would probably scratch it up. Right. Um, and so, you know, even though like the women's wrestlers, they wear braids and they don't have to wear caps, you know. So right. it's just it's one of those interesting things. I think wrestling is um changing some of those rules in terms of like hair length and, you know, facial stuff and um, just the wording that's used in t inside the rule books um, to, and I don't know if accommodate is, or, is the proper word, but accommodate um, black hair or black hair culture um, because it is different, uh, mm -hmm. not in a, in a bad way, but I think at times it's been, used as like a, a negative like if you're if you're in a wrestle basically you have to keep your hair cut um to you know to to wrestle and, and and things like that so it's just one of those interesting things um that i think everybody's working through as you know like the state of the world is like crazy right now yeah. and so everybody um, is either working through stuff and are trying to grow through stuff where people, some people are, you know, very set and firm in, in their ways and their beliefs, but it's definitely um, interesting where like the hair conversation goes um, when we're talking about, you know, um, black hair. Uh, let's stay on that topic. Then uh, can you talk about the BWA? You're a founder, correct? Yeah. So yeah. the BWA um, started that just with a conversation with Nate Jackson after the um, tragedy that was um, George Floyd in um, Minneapolis. And it just started with a conversation like, you know, like I feel like sometimes us as wrestlers feel like we have to uphold a certain level of surface toughness um, and, and not allow ourselves to maybe feel or um, – and be, you know, be, be, be real and, and raw with, you know, our emotions and feelings towards certain things. And um, I just started with a conversation and then it kind of developed from there. And we just wanted to see some, some growth with, with wrestling through the lens of, you know, a black male or a black female. And how we felt we could do that is by starting a BWA. And we felt that with that, we can inspire, connect and empower not just black wrestlers, but everybody, black wrestlers, allies to come together and grow wrestling, which I, th I believe needs growth through, mm -hmm. you know, representation, equality and opportunity. You know, like there's not very many, I think there might be one HBCU, um, historically black colleges that has um, wrestling with the scholarship opportunity. Um, whereas Iowa State is considered a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just historically, right? And so just looking at all those things, um, we just felt like there was an opportunity for growth and we felt like we could do something to help facilitate that growth. And instead of continuing to talk about it and not do anything, we felt um, the need to act. So that's how that process started. 
And how many founders are there right now? There's 11. So there's 11 founders, um, and there's just like some buddies coming together, some friends coming together that um, have spent a significant time with each other um, on the men's freestyle circuit. Uh, So that's how it came about. It was just like you reaching out to your network. Who do you talk to the most? Who are you closest with? And going from there, and then we're in the process of uh, establishing our strategic plan and our foundation our foundation, basically our fundamentals so that we can sustain um, this movement because in a perfect world, the BWA doesn't exist, right? Because things are equitable, things are fair. There's no need for it. Uh, In the world we're currently in, um, we believe there's a need for it. Uh, But in a a growth world that we would like to see, um, the BWA will dissolve itself because it will no longer be needed, right? Um, Yeah for whatever reason so we'll, we'll see we're, we're excited about the things that we can do um it seems like there's a lot on my plate right now especially because we got um i don't know about if you know about my nonprofit um that i started here in ames with erica andorf um we started a nonprofit called the be rare initiative yeah i was looking, um, and I was mission- looking into that last night what is that to or our mission statement is to promote healthy social and emotional learning through um creative outlets mm-hmm. uh, that you know basically giving every kid an opportunity to be rare you know everyone has their own individual greatness and you can't reach that individual greatness without healthy social and emotional learning practices and I didn't learn about social and emotional learning until grad school and I know what it did for me at 23 years old so imagine if you get that at five right and I feel like I got some of that you know from my parents and learning how to you know deal and um be resilient and adapt and things but like it wasn't like it was something that was like taught taught in school and if you know like I guess anything about social and emotional learning it's like you can a kid can know you know I read something the other day like kid can know three languages be an advanced math advanced you know chemistry and if they can't sift through their emotions and manage their emotions they're not going to be very successful or they won't be able to su- sustain that success. And so um, we really want to put a priority on social and emotional learning because we feel like there's so much more to a kid than just being able to read. There's so much more to a kid than just being able to do math or write. Um, if they if they can understand themselves, have a better understanding of themselves in the world and how they move in that world, and they can find their creative outlet, whether that's wrestling or it's coding or it's theater or it's music, poetry, whatever it is, then they'll find something that sparks them, ignites them, you know, that motivates them, inspires them. And they use that as their vehicle to be successful, right? Rest, wrestling just happened to be one of my vehicles to be successful. It, it got me an education, um, relatively free. Um, in terms of, you know, paying the money. Right. And so I'm, I'm super appreciative of wrestling because it's, it's been that vehicle for me to have a platform, to um, get an education, to get a master's degree. And I want other kids and other families uh, to experience that. And that's why Erica and I came together with the Be Rare Initiative and um, we're super excited about it. And we're, we're, we're working really hard on that. That's awesome, man. If there's anything we can do, uh, be sure to reach out and, you know, we'll try to help spread the message. Uh, oh, you guys got to get some shirts going. Maybe, maybe we'll, you know, so I can buy some, I'll wear some on here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, 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 we're working. We want to make sure, again, um, it's the same thing. We want to make sure foundationally we're in a really solid place so yeah. that it's sustainable, you know, um, because nothing you like, if, if you go from, a not you know being successful to overnight success as some may call it um you might not have that foundation uh to sustain it and so we really want to sustain it um and because you like you you look at situations um of 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 people that became famous or um came from you know maybe rougher backgrounds or different backgrounds and they gather all this fame and notoriety and money and they don't know how to navigate with it. Just like if you win the lottery. Yeah. How many people that win the lottery? I'm not sure, but 
um, know how to manage those finances, do the things, not get taken advantage of, all the things that you need to be able to do um, when you have that type of money. Um, if it doesn't happen organically, it, you're going to struggle. So we're just we're just trying to make sure we're on the on the right process and on the right path without not moving because not moving is, is basically a crime, but moving without vision and without um, a, a blueprint or a plan is, is, is like a crime too. So we're yeah, just trying we, to, try to do it the right way. We, uh, we went from like a hundred Twitter followers to like a thousand in like three weeks. And I'll tell you what, I was not mentally ready for the haters and trolls out there on Twitter. They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> They're I lost everything. like 10 pounds stressing out about every time I woke up, I checked my phone I, with one eye open, like, Oh no, who's got, who's after me today. But it's been, exactly. it's been fun. Yeah. I want to stay on the Twitter topic real quick. Um, I do this other ESPN radio show with uh, Scott Casper. It's called USA takedown. We had Giangelo Hancock on yesterday morning. I want to talk about a tweet. All right. Oh, there was a Frico, yeah. this yeah. whole Frico thing. Uh, I don't care yeah. if it was you that called him out or if, or if he called you out, he said he's down. Are you down if somebody put it together? Oh, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Giangelo and I go back, you know, um, yeah. he's obviously incredibly hardworking and he's, he's, you know, made teams. I saw him when we were over in, might've been Poland. Um, I saw him pin the defending uh, Olympic champ, you know? Um, and, and so like, I've always appreciated, you know, um, Tracy's process because it's not like he was some five-star recruit you know coming out like I think he might have won a Colorado State title um, but he's grown into a world team member and someone that's been pretty consistent on the Olympic Greco scene and so um, I've, I've pulled him aside after practices went out at, in Colorado Springs and stuff and asked him to help me with some you know parterre defense and um, some you know, situational things in terms of upper body tactics and, and, and things like that. And so I, I really appreciate his process. I respect him as uh, an athlete, as a, as a man. And so that would just be fun, you know, like mm -hmm. with all this, you know, like not having wrestled since December in a competition, right? So other than when I've been injured, this is the longest I've been, you know, eight months without competing. Um, but there might be some some big news coming up soon, um, mm. but I can't really get. Go it. ahead, say it. it. Go it, ahead. Um, no, I just uh, <laughs> so yeah, I would, I would, I would love, I would love uh, to just have the opportunity to scrap again. Um, so it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah, I want to talk about the Kevin Jackson era a little bit. Uh, there's some haters and naysayers when it comes to the. I call it the curtain era, but I actually didn't mind the curtain at Hilton. Did you like the curtain, or do you like it better now? Um. I always thought it was dark, um, and I guess I cried behind the curtain after I tore my shoulder in that Oklahoma match. So the mm -hmm. curtain kind of provided me some uh, it had some your back, quiet, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't know. I would have definitely liked for you know more fans to be there, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and come up and, and show show support and things like that. Uh, but you know, we we, we struggled a little bit. We struggled a little bit during that during that time period, um, in terms of you know I I feel like fan support. Um, I feel like we weren't as consistent as we needed to be as a team, uh, and so just looking at you know everything, I didn't I didn't like extremely like mind the curtain, but I never got to feel anything else. Yeah, you know, um, except for in the Iowa duel. Yeah. Um. So. You know, I always I think I think, you know, I know I know, you know, Kevin Dresser more than I do. I think you should pitch the idea of the Cyhawk duel bringing back that elevated stage. That was that was a good time. Yeah, I, I love the elevated stage. And I think I think he will do that. Uh, I think he just wants the team to really be able to like compete at that level where like it's really a show and it's not like a one-sided show. A lot of the dual meets I was in versus Iowa, the University of Iowa, they were on um, one-sided shows. Um, and that was never fun for me. Except um, for you. I, yeah, but it still wasn't fun. Like, it's like, it's like uh, maybe not demoralizing, but it's like depressing in a way because it's like you go to bat with, 
your teammates and you show up ready for war and maybe they're not ready. And I always go back to the, um, the, the remember the Titans movie with, with Julius and Gary Bertier where they're having that yeah. conversation. He's like, attitude's a reflection of leadership, captain. You know what I mean? And it was like that for me, man, because that's my favorite movie. Me too. Uh, is Remember the Titans. And for me, it was because I failed, in my opinion, as a leader to really show the things that we needed to be like doing like as a team you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah. um that's why we were inconsistent you know and the thing is like you can pull yourself out of out of a rut you know for the most part anybody can like pull themselves out of a rut in a way but to get 40 guys on a team moving all in the same direction all with the same vision all with the same goal um is it's a tough thing to do and so I feel like as a leader, I, I failed my, you know, Cyclone um, teammates in ways that I didn't recognize and realize until my senior year. And not so much because of like the wrestling, but because of the things outside of wrestling in terms of like sophomore year, like I'm dealing with the, you know, the father situation, right? So then when I come back junior year, I don't even want to wrestle. So I'm, you know, talking to the coaches and I'm like, yeah, I really could care less about wrestling, but I'm going to wrestle because I told you, you know, like I came here to wrestle and I told you I'd wrestle and I told you I'd be a national champ. Right. Yeah. And I told coach Jackson, basically, I was like, Hey coach, like I'll be, you know, you know, basically 95% of the guys, which is really like 99% of the guys, just because I like wrestling. I'm okay at it. And I, I don't like losing, you know, and I lost to one person that year, which was Scott Schiller from Minnesota. Yeah. And I don't think he was a better wrestler than me. And I still believe that to this day. I don't think he was a better wrestler. I think he was more focused. I think he was um, more social, socially and emotionally aware of his situation. Whereas like my junior year, I, I could have cared less about wrestling. Um, and so when I'm telling my teammates they need to wrestle hard, but then when I wrestle Schiller, right, I'm losing because I'm not willing to wrestle that hard, right? Like now I'm a hypocrite, mm. you know? Yeah. And so I felt like that kind of um, pulled over or flowed over into my, my senior year. Um, whereas my senior year, I feel like I was pretty spot on for the most part, other than the loss at um, the Southern Scuffle. Yeah, um, was it Maryland? Outside of that, I feel like I was pretty or Nebraska. spot on. Nebraska, Spencer yeah. Johnson. Um, I feel like I was pretty spot on um, in terms of character wise, but you know, like that was my, my own journey, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's like, there's some deep stuff that I can like reflect back at now and see like, ah, this is where you, you miss, you know, um, yeah. and just look to grow from there. All right. I, uh, before we get you out of here, I know you're busy today. Um, That's all good. I got time. I'm a Hawkeye hater, right? I don't right. know how you feel. I'm a Hawkeye hater. I was going through last night. I interviewed Austin Gomez. I said you were under. He's so far. He's undefeated at Carver Hawkeye Arena. You are too. Yeah. I'm gonna quiz you. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm gonna quiz you on all your uh, just dual meets, so not not tournaments or anything. Um, I believe you wrestled the Hawkeyes three times in in a duel, right? Just yes. three. Okay. Right. Can you answer? I'm gonna ask you. You won every single time. But I'm gonna, right. I'll give you the opponent's name in the year, and you're going to try to guess the final score. Okay, I, I think I can do that. Um, Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm, so two, okay. I'm a, 2000, 2012, 13. yeah. 2012, Burak. you wrestled Nathan Burak. It was a decision, um, and it was a one-point decision. What was the score? 4-3. Um, I got 5-4. Five, 5-4. Four. Five, four. Yes, five, four. Five, four. Okay, um, I didn't I hear it. I got two takedowns and an escape. He got two... Two escapes, three escapes, three escapes, and a stalling call for I don't know what because I wrestled in the middle of the mat the whole time. But yeah, they were tripping at Carver, which they always are. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that ref probably got Carvered. Um, all right, the next year you wrestled Sammy Brooks, another Sammy one Brooks. point decision. Yeah. 
um, that match was three to two, which um, <laughs> the story about that is right before the match, like two days before my shoulder came out. Oh, OK. So my shoulder came out again, um, but it didn't tear this time or it didn't tear like it had the other times. But the Dr. Buck, the dirt doctor that did my surgery, who's great. And the trainer, Tim Wiesner, didn't want me to wrestle. They're like, you can't wrestle. And I'm like, I'm wrestling. Um, I was like, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to score one takedown and I'm not going to do anything else. I was like, I'm going to score a takedown in the first 30, 45 seconds. Um, I'm not going to shoot. I'm a whole position. Um, we're going to win this dual meet. And if we don't, if we, if, if I don't wrestle, there's a potential, um, you know, six point swing. Um, so I'm like, I'm wrestling. And I scored my takedown, didn't do anything else. Um, held position pretty good in the center. Um, but Sammy Brooks was a 184 pounder at that time too. So he was moving up. So, you know, it is what it is. All right. The last one's kind of a trick question here. Uh, you wrestled Chris Claprot. Chris Claprot. And he wanted to do a whole Tony Ramos stare now <laughs> at the beginning of the mat. I wish you could find the video of the mat. Like I could if you can find, find the video, I'll that, edit it and put it in here and then we'll, please, yeah, we'll make fun of them. Please do because, <laughs> because they, they want to act like I was the guilty party in this situation. Okay. Yeah. When the whole, before the match started, they didn't send out Burak for whatever reason. Okay. So they send out Claprock, South Dakota yeah. kid, whatever, whatever. And he wants to act like he's Tony Ramos. You're not Tony Ramos. Okay. <laughs> so don't come across the mat trying to stare me down. Like, I'm not doing this with you. You're not Mike Tyson either. So, <laughs> Let's go. Keep going. So then um, he, he wants to do that whole thing. And I'm just like, and the duel meets already out of hand. So I'm angry about that. Right. Like, yeah. so we're not winning the duel. Mike Marino is the only one that wrote, that won. And so I'm just like, this is just, this is not fun. Right. And so I'm kind of disinterested because I, I basically know this guy can't beat me. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm, but again, that, that's where the mental part comes in. But I'm like disinterested. I'm just angry. So something happens where like I get a takedown and um, I know I'm disinterested, right? So I think I do, I do a little bit extra um, and we like kind of wrestle off the mat onto the floor. And so like when we go onto the floor, he like pushes me, right? Mm. The ref doesn't do anything to him. Like I'm telling you, you need to find the whole video. The I'll ref try. doesn't do anything to him, okay? Yeah. And then I'm just like, yo, like, Ralph, like, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to say nothing to him? So I'm yep. like, all right, bet. I'll take it into my own hands, okay? Because yeah. I, for the most part, I'm pretty calm about that stuff. But then when I get, like, bothered, I take it to a different level. So I'm like, all right, you're not going to do nothing. I'll take it into my own hands. So anyways, third period starts. He chews down, slap on a cradle, pin him, right? Yep. Now, key point right here. He wanted to stare at me and look me all in the eye at the beginning of the match. So yep. after I pin him, I want that same type of connection. Give me, same that energy. Same energy, give me that same energy and he won't look me in the eye anymore. Right. Yeah. He won't look me in the eye. And so then the crowd, cause I'm standing over and trying to look at him like, yeah, yeah, let's have some eye contact. I remember I was there. And, um, the crowd starts booing and the yeah. rest you know, grab me and like pull me, you know, like whatever, whatever. And I, the, the Iowa fans always bother me because the dude, dude behind the bench always chirping. Hey, Gadsden, you're not going to do anything. Blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, you're going to choke just like you did last year. So these, these people are all behind the bench, right? Like just the worst. Like chirp the whole time. And so I'm like, all right. So then I, I, I do that and I walk off the match. And then even Tom and Terry, really, mm -hmm. even Tom and Terry, like we come into Carver and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, Gatson, where's Coach Jackson at? Where's Coach Jackson? I'm like, that's not his name, right? So they're already trying to get under your skin, right? So mm -hmm. it's all mental warfare in there, right? But nobody sees that stuff. Nobody mm -hmm. sees that. So everybody loves Tom and Terry. And I don't have no problem with them, right? But like you're out here trying to do mental mental warfare, right? So yep. whatever it happened, he wanted to do a stare down. I was like, all right, give me that same energy. And then the refs always be on their side over there. And I walk off the mat and I'm like furious now, right? I'm getting booed, whatever. I blow him kisses, whatever, whatever. I need that video. I need I'm it. I'm gonna find it. Um, Boo, you stink! You're a phony. Hey! This guy's a great big phony. That's right. You're a big fat phony. And I, I spike my head gear when I walk off the mat and I yell at, I yell at the guys on the team. But again, I'm being hypocritical because the same thing happened to me last year um, where I wasn't ready to go several times, but now I'm telling my teammates they need to be ready to go. Right. So I was flawed in that, in that aspect of it. And um, 
I, I walk off the mat, I spike my headgear, and I'm like, why don't you guys just wrestle? Like, they're not any different. You know, like, they're not any different. They're just guys. But we, like, I'm mad because, again, attitudes are a reflection of leadership. So because I failed to do that against some other guys, you know, in my career, it's like it's manifesting itself. And I always wanted to be Iowa. Always. And yeah. it just never happened. Um, and I think that's partially due to, to my leadership, you know. Um, and I walk off the mat, spike my headgear. So I'm like, they take a team point, And then Mike kind of like guides me to the back um, of Mike Carver. Marino. Yeah, Mike Marino. Um, he, was a, he was a great captain, great friend, great brother. Um, he guides me to the back. He's like, we got to get you out of here. Because I'm just furious, right? Like I'm red. And uh when oh i get a team point taken i'm like that's just like throwing your helmet on the sideline right Right. like it's throwing your helmet on the sideline i don't think a team point should got deducted but whatever it's not like it mattered anyways but again it's probably it's not the right thing to do it wasn't the right thing to do right it was emotional um but then when we come back right so then our heavyweights get gets pinned and i'm just like this is exactly what i'm talking about like come on bro like (sighs) help me and so then I, I actually got into it with coach Jackson in the back um about like my behavior and he was right you know I have to keep myself in check you know um but then um when I'm walking up to talk to my mom after the duel because I like break down to my mom like after the duel like I'm just like I don't know and she like basically is like you better pull it together basically <laughs> like, like you better pull it together like um and I'm walking up the stairs and a dude throws a water bottle at me. Like, oh, like a, grown, a grown man throws yeah. a water bottle at me. And it's like, dude, like, and like at that point, I'm already emotionally calmed down. But if I would have been enraged, I'd have just ripped them apart. Right. And then I would have been the bad guy. Well, that would have just grown, made the whole thing worse. Yeah. You know? you, but you got a grown man throwing a bottle at right. a 20, 22 year old. Um, or I was 23 at the time or 23. No, 22, 22. And so it's like, you know, it's just like interesting. Nobody sees those things, right? But like, if I would have, if I would have reacted about that bottle, that dude throwing the bottle at me, um, that's the headlines. That would have been the headlines, right? Not everything that happened or transpired before that. The there's this there's this grown man throwing a bottle at at me, right? Like when I'm walking up to go talk to my mom, and I'm just like, all right. But I didn't I didn't I didn't react because I was already emotionally calm. But like, um, Coach Ference. Cause my dad coached um, Brian Ferentz, um in college uh, or in high school at city high. He was one of the assistant coaches after coming back from um, Eastern Michigan. Uh, coach Ferentz sent, cause he was at the duel. He sent me a, a, a letter um, or like a note, like just saying, you know, like he was proud of me and um, don't, awesome. allow, don't allow the um, naysayers in the, uh, the the fans and things that get to me you got to carry yourself a certain way and so I appreciate and I respect him respect him from for for that because you know it's true you know you can't allow people to um have like that type of access to you and that's why again why the be rare initiative and that social emotional um learning and social emotional intelligence or EQ is so important because of those types of situations like life is always going to be happening like life doesn't just stop, right? So whether it's wrestling, whether it's anything else, everybody's going through life out there. Um, and you have to be able to deal with life and still try to be great, you know, and still try to be rare. So I think that says a lot about you as a leader and a person that you got the win and you got the fall in that match. I'm not sure if you ended up guessing that or not. You got oh, yeah, the fall. I pinned him. Oh, you got the fall and then you're still upset because of the results that your teammates, you know, maybe not have done as well as you have. Um, so I think that does say a lot about you as a leader and a person. Yeah. yeah. And like, in the, then that was another thing that like I struggled with in 2015 at NCAAs is because I was the only one that, that all American. Right. Um, and it was, it was fun in the moment. Right. But then when you have to go back, and we're supposed to be celebrating, right? Like, cause this isn't how I imagined it. I imagined Mike being in the NCAA finals with me. I imagined um, Earl being 
um, All-American. I imagine Tanner Weatherman being an All-American that year. Um, I knew Leland was hurt pretty bad, but I thought he could be an All-American that year. Um, I thought Dante Rodriguez could, you know, really shake up some things and throw some wrenches in people's plans with the right draw. I knew Gabe Marino was banged up, um, but I felt like he he could have did some things. You know, Lou Gettle was at the NCAA tournament that year. So, like, I was, like, pretty um, – Kyle, Kyle Larson was there. Um, yep. I was, like, confident that we could, with the proper tournament, really dive into, you know, a top five team that year. Um, and for me, that meant we would have left I, – I would have left Iowa State in a better place than – what it was when I got there and to not achieve that was um, disheartening, you know, not just for, because it was like, people have asked me for like, would you rather have won like a team title or individual? And people say like, you're lying. If you would ask, if you say like, Oh, I would rather win a team title. And I'm like, no, nah, like, because if you win a, a team title, that means you got 40 people on the same page, 40 plus people on the same page in terms of student athletes, coaches, support staff, academic staff, everything has to gel. Everything has to click for a team to win, mm -hmm. but for individual to win, it doesn't take 40, you know, 40 guys in the room being on the same page. That individual needs to know what page they're on, you know? So it's easier to win an individual title than it is to win a team. So I nope. want to ask you about uh, you were so you were there with the Jackson era, and then you're you're here with the Dresser era. What was it like that day that uh, Jackson? Well, I guess Jackson resigned, I believe, in right. March, and then a few weeks later, a month later, whatever it was, uh, Kevin Dresser's the guy, and then we wait to see his staff. It's Brent Metcalf. It's Derek St. John. Now yeah. you know them probably exactly. a lot better. But exactly. from what you knew about the Hawkeyes and stuff, what was that day like where, like, they come in and it was almost like the freaking stormtroopers coming in and they sit down and they give the press conference and, and we're all sitting there like, oh, man, this is this is our new staff, you know? Somebody, I don't, I think it was on Twitter, maybe a Cyclone Fanatic, uh, somebody said it's like, with Brent Metcalf coming on, it's like getting beat up by a bully your whole life. And then you hate that guy, and then he marries your sister. Now you gotta like him. Yeah. What was um, it like for yeah, you? it was. It was. Um, it was like, wow, like this is um gonna be different if I decide to stay around, you know? Um, because that year I was getting ready for the World Team Trial, so all that stuff was changing, and I was basically trying to balance, um, training with KJ and Don Bradley, um, over at Ames High, with um training at the you know newly formed like rtc so that they could see that i train you know what i mean mm -hmm. um if i wanted to stay here uh so it was like tough because i hated brent like just like <laughs> just hated his like hated his guts like the whole 2010 with the caldwell situation yeah um just seeing like his demeanor when he was in the iowa single i just didn't like him um didn't care for him uh one bit uh and then like even in 2010 when or 2009 in december um i was on like an unofficial visit uh for the dual meet and when he pinned mitch uh that like broke my heart you know we lost 16 to 18 uh, and that like broke my heart right yeah. uh so Speaking yeah of, can you can you did you check david carr when he put up that clip of I believe it's that match you're talking about. Brent Metcalf. Uh, I don't know what he did to him. They call it like the brands, I think they call it. I don't know what that real term is. And they they, call it, oh, like, um, they call it the brands? Somebody told me that. Oh, uh, I don't know. I hate that guy, um, whoever I'm told just, me. I, I, I'm just like, ugh. I prefer the Gadsden, but... Um, I <laughs> but whatever you want to call it, Brent Metcalf did that to, was it Mitch Mueller? Mueller, yeah. And then David Carr, our own... Faithful, you know, the golden boy puts up a clip of that and then puts up his own clip. Like, I get it. He's comparing him. It's his coach. But it's like, if it wasn't, if it was Brent Metcalf doing it to, you Someone know, Buffalo, who okay. cares? Is it okay, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you check him for that? Um, I, I think I might have said something to him. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> but I'm like, 
but he loves he loves Metcalf, and that's how he should yeah. be. That's yeah. how it should be. He loves he loves his coaches. Um, he loves he loves Metcalf. He loves St. John. He loves Dresser. Um, and um, I respect that because that's their relationship, right? Yeah. Just like if somebody um, would have tried to question my relationship with KJ, um, I would have checked. Right. Yeah. So you know you got to respect that that's his relationship. Um, with his coaches and that's why I believe he's going to be you know a national champ because he um, has great rapport and a relationship with his coaches um, and, and and he really wants to win and he, and he wants to be good he wants to grow he wants to be great and he has the ability to do so yeah by the way David Carr do whatever the hell you want man just keep doing your thing um, I keep wanna, winning man just keep winning yeah just keep on winning I don't care you can put up a clip every day if you want it doesn't matter to me um all right before i wrap this up here are you going to be calling the duels again this year uh that would be the plan that would be the plan um i love i love commentating uh it's something that's fun for me and it's just i mean i loved having that matt iq show with Les. um that was really fun i i'd really like to do more of that like breakdown stuff um, wrestling breakdown where you're like taking a clip, but like, I don't know how much you really want to break down stuff that your guys, you know, like, Oh, like break down. Well, how does David score right here? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. cause then it gives somebody, you know, free access to, to, to breaking down one yeah. of your guys. Right. Um, yeah. But I'd like to do that on a higher level. Cause I love the technical aspect of wrestling and the art of it because um, it's helped me grow. Cause that wasn't something I always like to do technique was like boring for me. Um, it was just long, you know, draining. Uh, but I would, yeah, I, I really want to commentate again. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I love Iowa State athletics. So, you know, maybe there's something for me in the future um, in terms of uh, Iowa State athletics or uh, commentary uh, on, on a higher level where I can um, move into it and take care of my family. Um, uh, if I don't go into MMA or whatever, you know, no. Yeah, okay. Before, yeah. Sorry, dude. That was my last question, but I got one more. You tweeted yesterday, <laughs> MMA gyms in Des Moines. What the hell was that? Okay. All right. That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. Um, uh, but no, so I potentially have a wrestling match coming up. Um, okay. You keep talking about that, but you won't say it. Yeah, 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 because I can't. But <laughs> now now we have, like, this rapport, so yeah. I can text you afterwards, right? I yeah, you, you leak um, me the um, news, man. I, come yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Cyclone Faith. Um, yeah, you see it right here. You know, it's supposed to be in a in an octagon. Okay. So. Is, I hold on. Is this person signed by a professional fighting company? No comment. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. But I try. I, 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 hey, hey, if I tell somebody, the one thing I try to do is if I if I put my word on something, I try to be very diligent about. Well, I respect it. Sure. I just you know I'm disappointed, but I respect I, it. I got you. I got you. All right. So um, but yeah, it's supposed to be in an octagon. So I'm like, I want to feel what it's like to wrestle in an octagon before that happens, um, because there's like different intricacies, just like yeah. there's different intricacies for. Um, folk style and freestyle, uh, it's different wrestling on a regular mat with freestyle rules, doing push outs, where as if you're in an octagon and you can use the cage to get leverage or defend off a takedown, mm-hmm. um, that's totally different. So I, I would like to get in the octagon and feel that uh, before that potential match happens, because I think that it would be a disservice to myself to not. So I think I'm I'm gonna try to swing down to Porcelli Gym. Yeah, and, uh, that's and, right by uh, my house. Oh well, I'll tell you when I'm coming. All right. Uh, before you before we go here, go ahead and shout out B Rare, uh, BWA, whatever you want to shout out. Oh, okay. So I want to give a shout out to my support system, to my family. Uh, God is good. You know, like it's interesting because some of the stuff that you never think would happen in your life like happens, and you still have to adapt and overcome uh, to those things. And so my family, um, God, um, I want to give a shout out to, can you see this? See, that see yep. constant yep. pressure. That's my, um, new, uh, apparel company that I'm signed with. Um, they're out of Michigan. Um, I'm super excited about that. I got some gear dropping, uh, mm. sooner than later. 
and um, ice Sun cream. Kid. I, I don't know if we're gonna do any ice cream stuff right now. Um, we got some other stuff we're working on, you know. Okay. Um, Sun Kiss. Yeah, Eakin Nutrition. Um, Joey, uh, Boyens, down in um Clive has been taking care of me, getting me right with that. Um, check out my website, Gatson Strong. Dot, or actually, it's KyvenGatson dot com now. Uh, and Gatson Strong should take you there. But all my handles on Twitter are Gatson Strong. So I'm are on social media are Gatson Strong. So I'm consistent with that. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, keep being funny. Keep spilling the tea um, on cellmates because I, I enjoy it. It's always good times. Um, and I look forward to linking up like um, outside of this so we can like yeah. really, really, really get into some stuff. <laughs> I want to I want to get up to Hilton and maybe maybe I can get a media credential for the barn. Maybe you can hook that up. Um, oh yeah, yeah, we'll get some stuff done. And so now that I know, like you live o- over in that area, I have something for you too. Okay. What size, what size do you wear? Uh, I'm really, I'm really skinny, but I wear a large because, because I okay. shrink my my stuff shrinks in the uh, in the dryer, so shrinks okay, kind of like you. a medium. All right, man. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Kyvin, thank you for coming on. We're gonna link all that stuff, uh, all your pages and stuff in our description. Uh, thanks for watching.